How I Made Amon Hen. Hi there and welcome to Good Enough Scenery. Today I'm going to be showing you exactly how I made this Amon Hen fortress, which I think looks absolutely fantastic. It looks great on the game board, it's fun to play with, and best of all, it's not that difficult to make. It might take a little bit of time, but not that difficult. So I started by drawing a little plan, and then I just started cutting out the foam. And it's not a very difficult thing to do this, because uh, this foam is really easy to cut. Uh, you can cut it with a knife, you can cut it with a hot wire cutter. So I started by making the top slab, and then I've carefully cut out what will be the stairwell. So this is simply a hole, so when it's quite thick foam like this, it's good to do it from one side, and once you get a little bit through the other side to join it up, and then you can just plop it out just like this. And once you have done that, you can start working on cutting the steps. So to save, this foam isn't exactly expensive, but it's not the cheapest thing either. So the bit that I cut out, I then took slices of that to make the steps. I then cut a little bit of the uh, foam out here to make the very top steps, otherwise it was gonna be a little bit too thick at the top. So that is the top basically done in terms of the structure. So I moved on to the sides, which are again gonna be made out of the same type of foam. If you need to buy some of this, there's a link in the description. And this foam is two centimeters thick, that's 20 millimeters thick. So I cut one bit out and then I cut this directly down the center with uh, the hot wire cutter. Next up, we need to make something for the back. So in exactly the same way, I just measured out something and then cut it out. Uh, so these are the, these are the um, backs at the sides. And once you've done that, uh, you need to sand off the sheeny layer because otherwise uh, they don't paint particularly well. So sand off all of the sheeny bit. And once you've done that, you can add your details. So to do this, all you need to do is get a biro and just start scribbling on them. So whatever you scribble on will end up looking like rock detail. So I went for a kind of cobblestone effect almost on the uh, the stairway sides. And for the rest of it, I went for much more like tiles or brickwork. So you can see the cobblestone bit there. And on this one, I'm doing much more like uniform bricks with a, a ruler and a nice straight edge. And then for the top, I just did the same thing, and then I just randomly put some scribbles on to show cracks on the tiles, and I think that ends up looking pretty awesome. Uh, so next up, we are having to do the sides. So um, for this, I did a zigzag line. I didn't even use a ruler or anything, and then cut a little way in, and this is gonna form a nice fancy edge for it. If you look at the pictures in Tolkien's uh, drawings of these, they are it looks a lot fancier than this. But considering what the, the material we're working with and the scale we're working with, this sort of thing is, uh, I think, absolutely fine. So you just cut it very carefully. This took a little while. And then this is a very satisfying bit, peeling that whole bit off as one. And then you can just neaten it up a little bit as well. And that's what you end up looking like. So I did that with the remaining edges as well. Uh, and next up, I used a glue gun to glue the stairs on. Now, the best way I decided to do this was to glue the edge of the stairs um, onto the sides rather than trying to glue the steps to each other. I mean, they do kind of get glued to each other in a minute, as you'll see, but in terms of uh, doing it ne uh, nicely and neatly, I decided this was the best way. So did that on one side, and then you'll see that I've just put a little bit of glue up the back here, and then I've glued on the other side just by chucking a load of glue on the edge like this. And that forms it into quite a, well, it's perfectly strong. And it's, if you do it carefully, like I'm doing it here, then it's nice and neat and even as well. Uh, and I've measured these steps to make sure that a model can actually stand on it without tipping back. So there you go. Uh, I think that's about, that's well, just over half of a base width if you're playing MESBG. And um, then I glued on the sides, just again, smothering it in some glue and then putting it on. Not anything more complicated or difficult than that. Then slotted the sides in, sorry, the back in in exactly the same way, and that is the main structure of it complete. That's the kind of the bulk of it there. Next up, cutting pillars. So for these, I just cut a square thing, took off the corners, and then the great stuff about this, uh, ripping about this foam, is how easily it sands. So with a kind of octagon-ish shape, 
and then a bit of sanding, you can make what looks like a pretty round thing. I mean, it's not perfectly round, but it's pretty decent. Uh, and then adding some detail with a biro exactly in the same way as it did before. So nothing complicated here, just adding uh, just three layers of pillar and then you know, carving in a little bit of detail <clears throat> just with the biro tip. Then I wanted to make these pillars have a little bit more interest, so just put a little plinth, I guess, underneath it, which was just a square bit. And next up, just covering the whole thing in grey paint. Um, this is just cheap black paint, cheap white paint mixed together, covering the whole thing. The base is made out of two bits of playmat foam and uh, one main bit and then another bit, as you can see here. And then I've just glued the thing on top. Then I've chucked some expanding foam around it to form the rocky area at the back, leaving that overnight where that'll expand. And uh, here you see what it looks like expanded. And from here, just a case of cutting off the board and then carving this into a nice shape. I, uh, if you just watch my other videos, what I do is I generally just try and follow what shapes have naturally occurred when you've, when you've, when once the foam has expanded and it ends up, I mean, removing all of the kind of sheeny bit again, uh, but it ends up having some um, random craters in it. It ends up having some nice jaunty edges on it. And then after that, uh, having seen what parts of the play map was covered up, I then cut off the um, joining tabs. So you're doing this at a fairly steep, uh, or sorry, fairly, fairly flat angle to try and make sure that it looks, it blends into the game board. And then from here, it was uh, dry brushing everything that I painted gray in white. So you can see that brings out some more detail. It makes it look a little bit more like stone. You see, I've also made the uh, plinths for the statues at the side as well here. Uh, very easy to make them. And then you've got the top that I'm dry brushing as well. It's not exactly dry brushing because there's a bit more paint on it than if you were dry brushing, but it's between dry brushing and normal brushing, shall we say. And then doing the steps as well. I mean, some of these things you're not even gonna see, but it's just nice to add these details in. And I think that that ends up looking quite a lot like stonework. Uh, next up, the rocks. So for the rocky area, it's a dark gray paint uh, mixed with some sand and some PVA. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna color it, but it's also gonna have the sand stick to the rock. And then when it's dry brushed later on, that detail ends up coming up a little bit more and making it look a lot more like rock. So just getting into all of the details there. Next up, the base. For this, I just carved, uh, well, not exactly carved, just scored some lines in it so that it looks more like tiles. And then again, took the same gray paint and just carefully painted that on. And next up, some brown paint mixed with some sand and PVA for the bottom of it. And that's the bottom part of it all painted. Next up, just using the glue gun to glue the pillars in place. Make sure they're nice and neatly. And this is where measuring the score lines was helpful because like maybe be able to position the things really easily. And then sticking on the top was just a case of adding some glue to the top of the pillars, adding some glue around the back, and then carefully positioning the top into place. And already I think that's looking fantastic. This is one of the best things I think I've ever made. Really, really pleased with how it turned out. But we're not finished just yet. You need to get that firmly into place, hold it for a little bit, and then that's the structure complete. And then from there, now we're gonna add some detail. And this is the sort of thing you don't have to add in. So I'll start with some Zealot Yellow um, from Army Painter, and I'm just adding some random color where I feel like there might be some like lichen growth and stuff like that. Um, it starts off not looking amazing, but when you add in other colors and you kind of, I guess, blend it a bit, it, it starts to look better. So I've also used some uh, Sarah from Sepia here, just going in random places, just adding in dirt, just to make the whole thing look a little bit more lifelike, look a little bit more realistic. Then some Ethonian Camo Shade, use a lot of this, because it's a really great color for kind of grime and mold. Uh, so I was thinking about where water might have gathered or kind of been drawn up, putting it around on the floor as well putting it uh, on the top, you'll see in a minute as well. 
and just generally trying to make the whole thing look a bit more weathered, a bit more grimy, a bit more, you know, old. Because um, if you remember from the the Fellowship of the Ring, it was quite an old, you know, worn thing. Now to kind of make it more uh, natural looking, so I'm adding this torn grass, which you just make it wet both surfaces and then just slap it down and there's a whole area done. So I went around quite a lot of the uh, the rocky bits and the, the main part as well. And once it's down, if you kind of ruffle up the edges of this, it just kind of removes the lines a little bit. But that's what it looked like after doing that. Now, it's a case of covering all of the areas that are going to be flocked in glue. So I started by just putting it on with a uh, squeezy bottle and then spreading it around with a paintbrush. I like to use a teaspoon for this. Um, or, sorry, this is a medicine spoon. And you shake, just get a spoonful full and then just shake it on. So this is a, a battlefield mix with a little bit of flock in it as well. And just covering all of the gluey areas with with the flock. Nothing particularly complicated here. Uh, I recommend having something down underneath, which I didn't have because I knew I was about to sand and varnish the table. Uh, so when you're doing it, do it slightly differently. And Doing the top as well because there are going to be there are going to be things places where uh, things gather at the top, and this is one of the coolest things I've bought. These are autumnal leaves. I bought a whole leaf set. I'll put a link in the description to buy them from Amazon. But I feel like these leaves, this fall, is what really makes this uh, the salmon hen really kind of stand out and look fantastic. So just chose a few random places to put the glue down and then just had some of the yellower, more yellowy leaves and some of the browner leaves and just sprinkled them into piles and I feel like they um, they definitely, definitely added something to the to the overall build. Um, and with all of this, once you've got it in place, you just push it down a little bit um, just to make sure it's in contact with the glue. And then I took some tufts. So I used quite a lot of tufts on this because I felt like it was the sort of thing that it was worth um, worth using some tufts on. So again, I bought this um, this pack on Amazon. I think I got 80 to 100 of them for about four pounds. So they're, they're, they're inexpensive. And when you're making a cool bit of scenery, it's nice to it's nice to go all out. So I put, even put some on the walls back here where something might have grown out of a crack. And I feel like it really, really added something and kind of brought it all together. Um, but essentially what you're looking at is more or less the finished thing. So that's how I made Amon Hen. Really happy with how it turned out. It plays well as well. It's a great feature to have on your game board and isn't too difficult to make. If you've liked this, then please click like. Any comments, then please add them below. And if you've enjoyed the channel, then please subscribe. I'll catch you for another video soon.